we go. Let's do this. We are live from the Smart Recruiters booth at HR Tech in beautiful yes. Las Vegas. And we are chatting with Tracy Parsons, longtime fan and friend of the show. She is CEO of Flockity. Yeah. Welcome give it, give to it the bird, HR's baby. most dangerous podcast. <laughs> give your jobs Tra- the bird, Do you want to people. tell the bird story real quick? That yesterday that at Pitch Fest, I got yeah. swooped by a bird as I was closing. Yeah, you, you got hitchcocked by some birds. You, I just, you meant to do that. You meant and then to do somebody that. literally asked me if I did that. I was like, I don't have a flock of trained birds <laughs> like following bird me around. You know what? Maybe yeah. you should. But what I'm going to tell my son, what I'm going to tell my son is that. birds on the head. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Might, I'm going to tell my kid that oh, it landed dude, on my shoulder. It's kismet. Yeah. Kismet. I mean, yeah. Black Some of our listeners don't know oh, uh, who you are. Give them a quick elevator pitch. Yeah. So I've been doing recruitment marketing and employer brand work since the late 1900s. <laughs> uh, and if never, any, never say that again, please. No, it's fantastic. It's better than back in the 20th century. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Since the late 1900s. Yeah. Uh, you know, working with uh, a variety of the world's biggest brands throughout my 20 plus year career, helping them be better at recruitment, marketing and employer brand. Right. So helping them demystify a lot of the work that is obviously mysterious to people. It's got to be hard. It is. um, You can't see it on my forehead, but there is an enormous bruise there. It's huge. I'm sorry. Um, Um, The the YouTube Mm -hmm. viewers will only see this, but we have beers in front of us. Yes. And Chad put a coaster down. (laughs) My drink. Like, (laughs) That personifies who Chad is. He mommed your ass. Right he was there. so bothered by Cause, that. Because no, it's cause, not his table. Because I care. It's not his house. It doesn't have to be my yeah, table. Because you care. You care somebody, so, I do. You're I so care. anal. I and care. You care so much. No, I do care. Do not leave a. Do not leave a bottle yeah, ring on. I'll there. let you judge what that what that was. Yeah, but I had to that. mention that because yes, it was so <laughs> Chad. Slam that right down. He's like so Chad. Uh-uh. <laughs> it was nice and smooth too. It was. Yeah. I mean, it was elegant. Huh? So I try. Know. I don't generally get the elegance, but okay, I'll tell yeah. you. I won't mention he comes to my my hotel room in the mornings and de- <laughs> like throws in a quarter on my bed to make sure I made my bed tight enough. Really? Well, yeah. make sure the corners yeah. are okay. right. Yeah, got to get those yeah. right. Got to well, get the hospital corners. You know, you should right. make your bed every day. No, that's the first thing you should do. That's the first thing yeah. you should do. Yeah. Yeah. Back anyway, to business. So yes. What we were talking so, about? Yeah, late 1900s. So um, yeah. this is something that I feel like uh, you know. A lot of the industry has been pushed forward, um, but I'm tired of how not forward it's going. Right? Like, there's, we've been talking about the same ten things for the set for the last ten years. It are doesn't human, make sense. Are to humans me. just dumb? I mean, this is this isn't rocket are we science, just creatures right? Of habit? I mean, this isn't. Yes, th- th- it's not rocket maybe science. Maybe both. Yeah. Um, I think there's I think there's a distinct lack of will uh, to change. And change is hard and scary. Yeah. And um, when you have as many stakeholders in recruiting as we do, yeah, hmm. it's hard to make somebody the hero, right? Because somebody's going to feel like, well, no, I'm the hero, right? And the candidate is the hero. Without them, we don't hire anybody. Yeah. Like, and I get hiring managers. Sounds like are a pardon- customer. Candidates and customers. It, Should we start thinking of them that exactly. way? Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we've launched into this research around voice of the candidate, because we don't listen. Like you mentioned, right? Like, are we dumb? Are we creatures of habit? I think it's just that we don't listen. We're so interested in why? hearing why, um, because if we did listen, we would hear how they really think about us and what we do, which means mm. we could change for the better. I yes, have, I know. I have a different opinion. You I tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Uh Oh, everyone, if everyone wanted to be with you, you would eventually get in your head like I'm hot shit. 100%. And I can pick and choose and treat you like shit because you want to be on this side of the line. Ooh. And I think employers are too high on their horse or whatever uh, metaphor you want to use. And we end up treating candidates like dirt Yes, because they need us more than we need them. Now, that changes every now and then. But I think we treat them horribly. Customers where I give you money and I get paid a salary because you give me money. And the more money I make, maybe I make more salary or commission. Like there's an incentive there to be nice to people. The, the incentive to be nice to candidates isn't there. I don't know how we change that, well, but I think that's my theory as to incentive. why we're it, so we're so bad to candidates. It's not, it's not, I don't disagree with the assertion, but what I would add is that that thought process is in a fucking unsustainable model. <laughs> yes. That is an unsustainable model. I remember doing some research for a candidate, uh, for a customer, and um, I, I also run a consultancy. Um, we have software products, but in the consultancy, people hire us to like, 
oh, why can't we find talent in this market? I'm like, because you built a factory where there's no humans because it was cheap. And now you're like, well, crap, we, where do we find the humans? I was like, I don't know, because you built a factory where there are no humans. Like, you're going to have to come up with something. So there, while I hear, I, I agree with what you're saying, they think they're hot shit. There were reports a couple of years ago that Amazon's like, we've burned through entire markets yes. of warehouse talent because yes. we treat them like shit. Yes. Well, that goes beyond candidate to the employer, employee. Yeah. I, we're just get, we're not even at that point yeah. yet in the conversation. But that that in itself, though, I mean that that is the that's the the reputation that now Amazon has. To, so get to get candidates, yeah. even if they hadn't worked for them Amazon before. is. I would argue that Amazon treats the candidates better than they do oh, when yeah. they're employees, yeah. and that's a real issue oh, as yeah. well. Oh yeah. I don't know if I have more respect for they treat us like dirt on the front end and dirt on the back end. <laughs> if it could just be consistent At least it's dirt, consistent, like I guess. consistent they dirt. They think they're walking through the pearly gates yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're going straight yeah. to hell when they well, walk they just, in on their first day. Well, they, warehouse they, they, staff turns over, right? And so you, at least they're paid twenty two dollars an hour. That's Amazon, true. Prime. Amazon Prime, Amazon baby. Prime, and they got great benefits and a lot of TV ads. Well, let me throw this out there uh, because I think there's they drop like they're almost they're on the one yard line and yeah. they drop it. Case in point, my 18-year-old son who's interviewing, this is baseline stuff, right? He's interviewing from fast food to washing cars. Yep. He goes to the third interview, gets to the third interview. A third interview? Yeah, for a yes. car wash. I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, you got it. Like, they want background <laughs> check. They want <laughs> But, but why want three interviews? Yes, three? So, <laughs> that's not even the bad part. I'm so okay. sorry. Okay. But, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I just need Carry to go on. first. Get the fuck out of here with that. Okay, so now proceed. <laughs> Okay, it's crew car wash in case anyone <laughs> yeah, wants yeah. to know. Um, so he goes through three interviews as a car wash. Yes. Yeah. He's saying he's got it. I'm like, you've got it. They're doing background checks. He doesn't, he, they're like, you'll know by Monday. Monday comes, he doesn't hear. Tuesday oh comes, God. he doesn't hear. I'm like, okay, by w end of day, Wednesday, Thursday morning, like you can you call oh my them God. and just check in on what's going on. He gets an email Wednesday morning after three interviews with a car wash that is just a thanks for playing. We're moving on. We're, we chose another candidate. Not a, not a call. Not a thanks for playing. Da da da. Like so, he his experience was. Oh, this is great. She's laughing at my jokes. She's uh, you know telling her friends about us, and then like she they ghost him basically at the end. That's a shitty experience. That is a shitty experience. And I, I love when I see industry articles about like candidates are ghosting us now. I'm like, Dad, <laughs> we they, taught they, them. They learned it from you, Dad. We taught yeah. them. Eighties <laughs> joke. They learned it from you, it Dad. From you, Dad. <laughs> I learned it from you, Dad. Right. So Ooh. and and then they get pissed at candidates are using AI now. They learned it from you, dad. It's like, you can't have it both ways, no. right? This is, this is, this is why I come back to the fact that we have to start listening yeah. to how they feel about the experience. Yeah. And we just pulled the data from H124. Uh -huh. And when you isolate, this is, was fascinating to me because you can isolate the actual candidate conversation and filter out all of our bullshit, right? So the content that we are creating as an industry. Oh yeah. And the net sentiment for job seekers in job search right now is 14. It's the lowest I've ever seen it. What's the universe of that? Is it just all across the board? Is it certain kinds of jobs? Like all across the board? It is all across the board. So anybody who is talking about on the public internet, looking for a job, searching for a job, I need a new job. All of those conversations are indexed in the in the tool that we use. Uh -huh. And then we look at the sentiment and we kind of filter through. One of the funniest things was that if you isolate pay in the candidate conversation, uh -huh. that's 8% of the conversation, which is a little lower than I've seen it. It's usually 10% because when we were doing it before, it was a candidate's market, right? So they were more talking about pay, like pay me. Um, but when you unisolate it and get the whole industry take on the job search and the job search experience, it, it drops down to 3.5% because we do not want them talking about pay. We do not. Yeah. We want them to think that this is a noble purpose to come to my place of employment yeah. and make lots of money. We've got for a my great suite. culture here. That's Get that's <laughs> that's how we grow profit margins. We Thank don't you. pay our people shit. Right. That's how it right. works. That's the whole yes. thing. Yes. Right. And and we don't want them to talk about it. No. So we drown out that conversation. But it's something that really matters to them. I've never gotten the whole idea of we have through through the application process. Yeah. Just just the front end. We, we like it to be long because of the friction. 
We like the friction because if somebody makes it through, then they have the stick to itiveness. That's such bullshit. To, I, what? Is, is it is it bullshit or do they really believe that? Okay, A, both things can be true at the same time. Yeah. Huh? They actually really believe that. Yeah. And it is bullshit. It is a bullshit thought process. No, it is. And what I've what I've been advocating for for probably a decade is right. that we have to figure out how to redistribute the friction in the candidate experience. Right? Because right now we are overselling. What's the incentive though? What's the incentive? Again, I go back to they want me more than I want them. They're going to jump through hoops they and aren't, hurdles. But, and But they've been proved that that's, that's not how it works. And you has lose. Has it been proved? Great, yeah. It's, yeah. You lose great talent, when, which is one of the reasons why. And, I, and I'll go to the attrition side now <laughs> where, again, Amazon, another wonderful Amazon story, where they, AWS, they, they had actually noted that they were losing $8 billion. Yep through attrition yes. right so now they care about oh well, we got to keep our fucking people right mm -hmm. so they they start to understand that but yet they're still not making the changes they need to right they're doing all these warm and fuzzy things like giving them free amazon sure. prime giving them free fuck you right <laughs> well i, mean, I, I, I can remember, pay for that <laughs> right i remember talking to an employer once and it was tesla right uh, and tesla was like man we have a candidate quality problem i wonder why and i i said have you seen your website <laughs> And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, everywhere on your website, it says you can come here and change the world. And I'm like, you know what? I would love to change the world. This shithole's a fixer upper, right? Like, yeah. I would like to see some things change. Yeah. And I asked her, I dug in. I was like, what does that actually mean in practice? Like, what does that look like? What does changing the world look like if you're a Tesla employee? She's like, well, I mean, it really means being on your A game at three in the morning if, you know, Elon <laughs> calls you from the gig of... You know, factory yeah. was floor. that really her answer? That was, that her, was answer. her answer. And and I was the answer like, should be we're making EVs to reduce planet climate change. And then I would have asked her a follow up question again. <laughs> what does that look yeah. like in the context of actually working there? Yeah. And you have to spend a lot more time screening people out in that front end. So you will not create disappointment. One of the things that we've done wrong since I've started doing this in the late 1900s is we continue to tell people that this is going to be amazing. That's, you know, sunshine and roses yeah. and we're a family. Oh, my God. That's the biggest red flag. Just look at these stock photos on our career. Right, look at these stock photos. <laughs> look at our diversity, like all of this. Right. So there's nothing in there that's that's telling somebody that there's somebody that doesn't work for them here. And I told her, I was like, you don't have a quality problem. You have a branding problem. Like you're telling people things that is not real. Like, and while it is real, but you're not giving them a layer beneath that to say, wait a second, I don't think I'm going to be on my A game at three o'clock in the morning. Well, and here's the thing. We we don't have to have friction or a lot of friction. Right. Right. And and here, here's what I mean by that is we have the technology and the systems in place where we can screen them up front very easily. Yes. Right. You can parse the data. You can ask them, hey, do you do you meet these requirements, yes. blah, blah, blah. And then off you go. Yes. You don't have to wait for a human being to schedule you for an interview nope. if you do. Right. I mean, all these things, there's so much. And the funniest thing is, I remember back in the day with uh, Union Pacific Railroad, Ooh. they built their own goddamn applicant tracking system so that all of the candidates could see where they were in the process. Revolutionary. Right. Revolutionary. Right. Was this the 1900s? Yeah, this was in the, no, no, no. it wasn't. Okay. It, was, it was early Damn 2000s, it. early 2000s. But in still, the year 2000? The, 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 the fucking railroad. Yes. Right? Yes. It, and here we are in 2024. That is how, so far from that. How of how many systems automatically just tell you where you're at and yes. give you that nice little ping? Yes. Or or if you're not qualified, I don't know. We might have the technology to go ahead and divert you to something that you are qualified for. Or and then you can apply it. I mean, if you want to. But yeah. Again, the experience. And hear me out. And that's just good business. If somebody is not qualified today yeah. and you have their data and information yes. and you don't look at them two years from now, what are you doing? Oh, don't get me started on that. Like, what are you doing? Don't I had this started. conversation Let's with somebody this week. Don't get me started on that. I'm going to get you started on that so, because I had a conversation this week. I've been advocating for an advertised last model and I run an advertising company. Okay. I do not believe that every job should be advertised. I no, believe, and no. I don't understand why they hear, just hear me out they a second. They have to for compliance reasons, but yes. No, but hear me out. You open a requisition. Yeah. You press a button to post it. Okay. 
instead of pressing a button to post it first. Yes. You could post it internally if that's your if that's your compliance, whatever compliance measure you have. Yeah. But before you make this a public advertising moment, create a slate of people in-house that already fit this criteria. Yeah. Create a slate of people who applied two years ago. In your applicant tracking system. In the system. Yes. Go source all of these channels that you have yes. before you ever put that out on the public internets on Indeed or LinkedIn or Flocking. So how, how long do you think a, a CMO would have their job if they created all these leads and then they just buried the leads? Um, a day? like uh, th That's what they're doing. I know. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of billions of dollars yes. that are being spent every year yes. to be able to throw shit in the applicant tracking yes. system yeah. and never go back to it again. And for the same damn job that they need to post again, maybe a month later, guess what they do? They put it on fucking Indeed. Yep. And they already paid to attract the person that they hired. Yep. Yes. They've paid to attract that same person 67 different times. It is the biggest waste of money. It drives me fucking crazy. Yes. And I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I've had a lot of I don't get it moments this week. But they're stale <laughs> after a month. They're not fresh anymore. Yeah, after they're, a they're, month. And why oh aren't they God. fresh? And why aren't they fresh? Oh because you've done nothing to reach out to them. You've done nothing to cultivate See, that now relationship. now you got her started. Got yeah, her you've started. done nothing. You've done nothing. So you, the data sits there and they're like, oh, it's not fresh. Well, bitch, what did you do to freshen it? Yeah. Freshen that shit up. Freshen that, freshen that lead. And again, we, we have... I'm thinking the uh, six six million dollar man. We have the technology. We have the technology. Uh, we, 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 we keep can, going we, back to the 1900s. We can, we can do. So we can, we can do this. We have the ability. Um, but I, and, and I see I, I see your friend uh, Matt Lavery over at, at UPS. There, okay. guy's been in this 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 um, business for 27 years. Yep. And he is he's built systems that actually are doing what we're talking about. I mean, seriously, oh. apply. The job is posted. They have to for compliance right. reasons, but it goes to the database. It's the database goes internal. Right. I mean, it's one of those things where d don't fucking tell me it can't be done. It People are doing it. Right. We just again, there's this complacency sometimes in the industry that makes me want to just <laughs> run screaming to the hills. <laughs> <laughs> throw birds at people's heads. <laughs> I mean, being a new bird launcher. Oh, yes. Right. There's no such thing as empty yeah. nesters. Give, well, give them the bird. So uh, upscaling's huge. All yes. the kids, all the kids are talking all about upscaling. Talking about is it. that going to save us? No. <laughs> 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 Say That's more. So sweet. Say more about that. I Tracy. almost want to reach out and pinch your little cheeks. That's so sweet. So I mean, <laughs> is that going to fix it? No. We have to fundamentally rethink how this whole shit works. Uh, right? And is reskilling and upskilling important? Hell yes, it's important. Like, it's we don't incredibly even know what that important. Means. We haven't defined it. No. It is a buzzword. No. And nobody can say, oh, I can upskill. How do you know? Like, and then we would probably say, we're going to launch this upskilling program whether you want to or not. Right. We're going to upskill you. And they, we never ask the we never ask the employees. We never listen to the candidates. We just we don't show them what it actually means because we're not 100%. transparent with regard to career path. A hundred percent. Being able to go up the current career path 100%. or even go laterally or down. Let's say you've got a situation yes. where you're yeah. like, I need to work less because I have yeah. a parent I'm caring for or a young child. Or or, I just like, like to work less. Right. I actually was in a cab last night. Okay. I love cab drivers, right? They're so much fun. I always chat up the cab drivers because they always have great stories. I'm sure so they I, love it. Th the ones that <laughs> I get do. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Is this doing. a tipping system like Uber <laughs> that you're in? No, no. No? But okay. he was telling me a story. So this, this man was 78 years old and he was ready to retire yeah. at COVID. And then COVID happened. Like he was, COVID happened right before his retirement. Wow. Vegas shut down. They furloughed everybody. And drivers here are required to have a 12 hour shift. I don't know about you guys, but required? I can't. Required? That is their shift. It is a 12 hour shift. Deal with it. Did it go to Uber? I mean. I, I don't know. Okay. So, so the, the point of the story was, is that he and a bunch of his other peers who were just close to retirement. They said, you know what, what if we, when we start, when we start getting back opened up, if we had like a flex system. So like if I wanted to work five hours or only on Tuesdays or if I wanted to do this, why couldn't I do that? And they, this group of, this group of cab drivers took it to HR. And do you know what HR said? 
nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> and then they, so did they unionize and have no. a happy ending? No, See, okay. no that would have been. But the happy I'm, ending I'm was a fan they, of happy they went endings. HR and went to the CEO and presented, made their case to the CEO, and the CEO went back to HR. He's like, yeah, we're totally doing this. And now he's dri- He's like, I'm driving four hours today and that works for me. And see, and this is one of the fundamental problems that we have with HR today Listening? is that we <laughs> are not thinking about business and how we're actually impacting the bottom line. Yes. And making people happy enough to come back to work. Right. Right. To be able to be flexible enough, not to mention how many more people c- would want to come drive. Yes. But they don't want to do 12 hours. I don't want anybody driving me in the 11th hour of their shift. I'm going to be honest with you. I I, was like, dude, that sounds like the most unsafe thing. He's like, I am 78 years old. It is the most unsafe thing in the world. I'm amazed with Uber that they even have to question this because the the number of people could just be like, I'm going to go drive when I want to drive. Right. Go pound salt. Right. Right. Uh, but they were loyal to this company. Like, and that's the other thing. Like we take something. advantage of their people's loyalty. Oh, dude. So deeply. We've been doing it for so long. Since way before and the late 1900s. So good. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but younger generations aren't into that. <laughs> oh, they Only are not. Seven to eight year old people. They're I not. Love, They're no, not. I, which I love. I love. We Same. were sold a, a, a bill of bullshit. Yes. Right. Yep. And, we and, you know, rugged individualism and all. This, and then, you know, the, I mean, my oldest, she is a fucking A player, right? Yeah. She's not taking that shit. Nope. She, which most females do not do, yeah. she negotiates the shit out of everything, yes. right? Why? Because we taught her. Yes. We got fucked. Yes. <laughs> you need to do this. Right. I, I'm going to tell you like personal story, but I I am a, my grandfather was an immigrant from the Czech Republic. Uh-huh. He worked in the coal mines in West Virginia. My dad, Right. I know. My my grandmother also worked in the mines oh, for a period of time. On. I shit you not. And Ooh, then that's another flockety kind of connection, by the way. Right. And yeah. then my dad was a rubber worker at Goodyear for thirty years. Yeah. So and it's no surprise to, to me that in the green room you told us before we hit record that you look in the mirror and go rally bitch. You rally bitch. Because you have generational rally, rally. bitches yeah. <laughs> that are like doing jobs that would love to be in your shoes. Yes, uh, and, my, yeah. and my mom, my dad passed away in, in 18, but my mom always reminds me, she's like, do you have any idea yeah. <laughs> What your your dad would shit himself if he saw you today. Like he would legitimately lose his shit. And he would tell he would go up to tell people, he's like, My daughter is the CEO of a company. Can you believe that? What does she do? I have no idea. I don't get it. <laughs> Sounds important. First and foremost, I just said she was a CEO. It doesn't right. matter what does she does. Does it matter? Yes. But I think that seeing their trajectory and how they were treated and yeah. how their work makes me that's what drives me to do what I do. Like I have said this a thousand times. The relationship between candidates and work and employees and work is 100% egalitarian. We need each other. Yeah. They need us to do the work and make profits. We need them to provide lives for our families. Like this is this is a symbiosis that is never recognized or acknowledged. Yeah. And we absolutely shit on it all the time. Rap. Uh, I got to ask. <laughs> okay. Head in 25. Oh. Predictions. Get your crystal ball out. What are we going to be talking about? <laughs> the same shit we've been talking about oh, for God the last damn 10 years. Have you not been listening? Jeez, Can't man. you come out of the 1900s for at least <laughs> no. a no, few I, sound I, bites? I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I And this is, this is personal, but I do think we are going to be talking about how we change the distribution of jobs. Um, how how the current model of job distribution does not work because people don't trust those entities anymore and they actually trust people, which is why Flockity is doing such a remarkable thing because... So say more about that. They yeah. don't trust the jobs. They don't trust the job I boards. click on the job, it takes me to another site yes. and then I have to go to another site click, after that. Click, and I got to like yes. click, yeah. take out the, the pop-up register. and register somewhere else. They're, that's broken as hell. That's bullshit, right? The number of the number of feedback, the, the piece of feedback we get from our influencers and their community is, it's like I I don't go to Indeed, I don't go to LinkedIn, I don't I don't use those tools because I don't believe those jobs are real. 
and I don't ever hear anything from them. Like it's just this black hole. But when they see somebody talking about the job, like they're talking about, like I'm a nurse and this is what I do to be a good nurse. Mm-hmm. And then so the quick, nurse is like, I've got some real jobs. quick, give us yeah. the elevator. Oh yeah. Flockity is influencer marketing for jobs. So essentially companies send us their job feed. Yep. They buy a click bank because we're a pay per click model. Once we have their feed and their money, we release their jobs out to our influencer network. Influencer goes and picks up a job, copies the short link, puts it on their public sh- social profile. Anybody that clicks on that so job. So it's not a nurse at their hospital. No. It's, it's a, a random nur- nurse. It's a random nurse yes. promoting the job. With, yes. But nurses the, are following with them. With a big Correct. follower. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. Big following. I'm glad, yeah. I, I'm glad yeah. I, I cleared that up. Yeah. So people believe people. And I think that we're going to have to start to acknowledge that our current model is not trusted. Candidates do not enjoy anything that we're doing. They only participate because they have to. That's a, that's a paid model, to. right? I mean, you're in the same, someone's getting paid to promote a job. It yeah. Does, doesn't look the same. Is the tru- doesn't Definitely look the, same. the experience is different. Yeah. yeah. But won't that, isn't that the same trap you're only saying it's great to work here because they don't say it's great to work there okay so because they don't work there right the content that they're creating is about being good at this job and then every couple weeks or every week or every other day so why i love nursing versus why i love love nursing at xyz company got it um and then they very rarely mention the brands that we're working with because they don't want comments. Oh, yeah. Because they're not dumb. Yeah. Right. So they just will like every now and then make a video and say, hey, I've got some I've come across some great jobs I'd like to share with you. They're in my link in bio. That's right, kids. You're going to give your company the bird. Yeah. With Flockity. Tracy Parsons, <laughs> CEO of Flockity. Thanks, and That's their tagline, dad, by the way. Dad, give them the bird. Dad would, be, dad would be proud. Dad would he be is, so John would is, be freaking out. Proud. So people want to learn more about Flockity or even connect with yeah. you, where would you send them? Flockity.com, F-L-O-C-K-I-T-Y.com. I love it. I love it. And then you can always find me on LinkedIn. I am the bringer of sunshine. <laughs> Tracy, thanks for hanging out with us. Enjoy uh, the rest of your time me. in Vegas. Chad, that was fun. Yes. And we, we out. out.